Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today I'm going to show you how to clean and restore a PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 controller. They're basically the same thing outside, externally anyway. And uh, I meant to do this, my apologies. Recently, I mean really recently, like I think it was my previous video, uh, I did this, I cleaned and restored this PlayStation 2 that I picked up. And I meant to um, basically clean this controller in the video, but honestly I totally spaced on it. Uh, so yeah, I'm basically tacking this on as a little bonus, uh, so there you go. A lot of people have requested this over the, over the years, so yeah, let's do this. Real simple breakdown. This particular controller is not that dirty. It, it does have, as you can see, some dirt on it right there. It's got some, of course, trapped inside the cracks. Um, these, you know, grip areas, these can get really gross over time. Um, a lot of your, this is going to sound nasty, but it's the truth. A lot of your skin will get kind of caught inside these little cracks and will form in there as like giant layers of dust and nastiness. So we're going to get all that shit out of there. A lot of stuff on the back as well. And uh, just generally, uh, just make it nicer and uh, restore it. And I highly recommend doing that with any of your controllers as well. Um, but I already know this controller works, so likely it will still work afterwards. And if it doesn't, oops, I fucked up. But yeah, let's get started here. Now on the back, there are six screw points. Uh, there's two right here. Um, then there's two in the center right there, and then there's two here. Now these use a, um, a Phillips head screw, but it's a smaller one than usual, so you'll have to get the appropriate screwdriver. Once you have the screws out, we'll take the controller apart, which is pretty easy. It basically just comes apart like that. Um, now this side, of course, will have all of the components, and the back piece will essentially just be plastic. Uh, so now at this point, if you want, you can just take this part and uh, rinse this up with some soap and water and get it nice and clean. Um, you could take the triggers out, although there really is no real reason to do that. All right, scrub that up. Looks really good. Uh, one piece of advice, uh, I would suggest keeping an old toothbrush around and, uh, you know, just one like this and, you know, one that's been like totally beat to shit by your teeth over the years um, and that now you just use as a tool. Um, use that to uh, basically clean up the edges here along the side of the controller because, like I said, a lot of dust and just nastiness will get in there. And, uh, yeah, it's really good to get, be very thorough, especially on the cracks on the outside. But uh, And on the back right there with all the plastic with the text and everything, a lot of dust gets caught in between the lettering. So good to do that. Um, so that's the back piece. Now let's bring in the front here. Now, of course, this contains all the electronics, so you're going to have little button pieces that are going to come off. Uh, I recommend just kind of lifting this up here and uh, basically just using gravity and just kind of letting this pop out and uh, then you'll have the front plate off. And again, we're gonna go do the exact same thing we just did. All right, I've rinsed it up, got it looking a hell of a lot nicer. Ironically, the one part I wanted to take care of the most, I can't, turns out that's actually damaged the paint. That's not like dirt or anything. But uh, same thing applies. I took a, the, you know, a toothbrush and just really uh, got in around all the button areas so that a lot of those dust particles would go away. But yeah, looks really good. So now I'm gonna put it off to the side and let it dry along with the other part and we'll bring in the guts here. As you can see, buttons are just gonna start flying everywhere. What you're gonna wanna do is take all these little plastic bits, um, these little rubber bits as well, and uh, put them off to the side uh, along with the triggers here. Basically just take uh, these elements and go ahead and uh, clean these all up in the exact same fashion. Uh, I guess you might as well take this one as too. All right, I've cleaned up all the little buttons here. So again, we're gonna put these all off to the side and let them dry up. So now there's only just a couple other things we can do to basically clean this thing. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take uh, some compressed air. Uh, you could use uh, cans of it, or you can use what I'm gonna use, which is this, the DataVac electric duster. And all you really do is you just kind of blow it on the console. I obviously meant controller, not console, but I'm sure you got the point. Uh, there wasn't really that much dust that came off of this thing, so there is only one other thing we can do, which is that we can take um, some Windex or window lean, depending on where you are in the world, uh, and a Q-tip, and you can just go around, you can put some on the Q-tip, of course, and we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do a spot cleaning, like there's some, you know, some grime that's kind of formed here on these parts, and just kind of clean these up and uh, on both sides there. Well, I'll do that more in a minute. But uh, you can also clean the contacts so that it improves the probability that the uh, controller buttons work or at least last longer. And for that, again, you take some Windex and you just kind of go over all these little black spots here and just kind of, you know, do that. You, uh, depending on, you know, your controller and depending on how dirty or not dirty it is, 
You may end up getting a lot of gunk off there, or you may end up getting basically nothing like I did. One last thing you can do is, depending on, so these are the little joystick things, of course. You can't really take these off without more work, which we're not going to do. So you can clean these up, you know, externally, you know, use uh, perhaps like um, some paper towels and some Windex and just kind of, you know, get the surfaces cleaned up. You can also clean around the edges again with some Windex and a Q-tip or paper towel, whatever you prefer, and just basically try to get as much gunk off of there as possible. One thing we're going to do before we put the controller back together is, it's a completely optional step, but I think it's kind of nice. Uh, we're going to take some pledge. Uh, in this case, it's orange pledge. You could use any really, really any kind, except for moisturizing tends to be a little bit more difficult to work with. But basically, all we're going to do is take it and uh, put some on a paper towel, just like this, and uh, then we're going to rub it around the edges of the plastic and everything. And you can do the front, uh, you know, all over, and of course the back piece there. And uh, the whole point of this is to bring out like a shiny kind of glow to the controller. Um, and that makes it look a little bit, you know, newer and fresher. Uh, generally when I put this on consoles, I do it at the end, at the last step. Uh, but in the case of the controller, I feel like it'll just be substantially easier to do that while it's apart. So uh, if that's up to you if you want to do that. But if you do do that, uh, I suggest leaving it out for, I'd, I'd say let it dry for like a good, you know, 10 minutes or so. It's sufficiently dry, so now it's time to put the controller back together. I find the easiest way to do this is to take the front piece, flip it to the back, and uh, just start plopping pieces in. We start with the D-pad there, and then we take this weird like claw thing, and you just kind of put it in like this, and it should just kind of sit in there like that. Uh, then you take this uh, part and then put that in, and that one kind of just meshes in, and then there you go. Uh, and then you just basically start doing it for all the other places. Uh, so I believe s these pieces are like shaped they uh, they have specific mold points so they can really only go in one way but uh, yeah you'll want to put that that one there and then uh, I drop that but X goes there square goes there triangle goes there and just go ahead and do that once that's in place you can take the uh, start select an analog pad thing and plop it in there then you're gonna want to take your uh, your triggers here uh, and then put them into place which I believe go they go in just like uh, they should just ride some track there and then uh, actually I think this one go uh, you'll get it there you go and uh, probably gonna screw this up again but okay the easiest way to tell is there's these two clips on the outside the bigger clip comes up like towards the back of the controller once you have this completely put back together, I suggest putting this off to the side and uh, we're going to take the guts and put it back in. So to do that, I suggest starting with the back and uh, taking your uh, base here and just kind of sitting it into place, which can be a little difficult, but you, you should be able to get it. Uh, and then we have to finally put the, uh, the two pieces back together, which is probably the hardest part. Um, I suggest starting from the back and kind of going over this way, uh, just because there's less things that were likely to fall out. Uh, so we kind of just sit it back into place. And you'll probably have to mess with it for a second here, but um, yeah, that should uh, pretty much do it. Yep, there we go. And it's clipped back together. Now, of course, there's no screws in it, so it's not holding together very well. So obviously, the next step at this point is to take those six screws we took out and put them back into place. And there we go. We have the controller back together, and it looks a hell of a lot better, minus that part, which sadly we can't get rid of. The only other thing you can do if you really want to is you can take this piece um, and just kind of, you know, again, take a paper towel and some Windex or some uh, pledge, as I'm about to use, and just kind of rub it on the plastic there and just make it shinier and nice and all that. Um, I do not suggest doing that on the inside where the contacts are, of course, but uh, yeah, you can just do that to clean it up a little bit. Uh, you may also want to take a Q-tip and uh, take it and uh, stick it in the contacts there and just kind of, you know, get a little bit of extra dirt out of there. But uh, yeah, in general, that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, so I hope this helps you if you need to know how to clean and restore a PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 controller. Um, I'm confident this controller works. I'm not even going to bother showing it. But uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.